All right, let's see what this one meal a day hype is all about. I mean, come on, it's one meal. How could you mess that up? Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are touching on what I'll call phase two of OMAD, and that's optimizing it. In other words, preventing against the common pitfalls while maximizing its benefits. And I say this going into my third month of following the protocol, coming off a more extreme six month stint of alternate day fasting, which you can see here. And I'm gonna be frank with you. Even though I'm Kevin, I'm gonna be frank for a second. The first couple of weeks of OMAD were a little choppy. Choppy in the form of impaired sleep quality, according to the Aura Ring, based on my six month running averages, and some added pounds around the waistline. So after a few weeks and a vast improvement or adjustment to this new OMAD life, I thought it'd be useful to share a couple of tips that you can apply when considering or improving your OMAD adventures. Kind of like the ring to that. OMAD adventures. Do I hear a YouTube series starting? All right, so let's get cooking. Oh boy, hope I don't get hungry. Tip number one. Instead of thinking of it as one meal, think of it as a grazing window. And here's why. OMAD is interesting and unique because technically you have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment or di Wait a sec. I didn't know Eminem made his song about one meal a day. Hmm. All right, I'll stop quoting Lose Yourself, but kind of felt it was appropriate. What I'm trying to get to is you have one window to both nourish and satisfy yourself. And if you don't, you open up the risk of performing at a level that is subpar to you. And with this being the case, the default, at least for me, was to jam my plate, okay, jam my platter full of nutrient-dense foods and stuffing it down the hatch in basically one sitting typically within an hour. This strategy right here left me feeling quite stuffed, to say the very least. To say more, it led to some short-term bloating, some discomfort, and basically wanting to take a nap. And what triggered me the most was I found that my sleep quality was taking a hit. With my deep sleep decreasing, my heart rate variability becoming oddly low, and my resting heart rate jumping up a little bit all signs that I was getting a less than optimal recovery. And that ain't cool. So with that data in hand, I moved to a more gradual eating strategy. Eating the same meal over a grazing window of about two hours. Letting my body have short 20 minute or so digesting periods before the courses. I guess you could call them courses. It's not that fancy. If you wanna get a little more tactical, here's kind of what I'm doing. First, getting the digestive juices going with a little Lemon water, water, lemon squeezed in it, and then something easy to digest, like a piece of fruit. I like going with a grapefruit, some blueberries, some raspberries, something, something along those lines. At this point, I take my first break, stand up, because we know you wanna eat sitting down, right? And get back for the main meal, which is a fiber-loaded, protein-packed, typically a beans or legumes-focused dish to fuel up for the day. After this, we have another mini break where you stand up, you walk around, walking and standing helps digestion a little bit. And finally, I finish off with some greens and good fats. And that's it. This shift, like I said before, brought the grazing window to about two hours. So technically, I'm following a 22 and two OMAD strategy. And surprisingly, almost all the problems that I listed before started to improve. Who would have thunk? The sleep numbers got better. I began leaning out a little bit and that post-meal discomfort was basically non-existent. So this would be my first suggestion or tip to explore. Don't think you need to finish everything, especially large portion size in one sitting. Don't force anything that's uncomfortable. It's the simple stuff. 
It's all right to get your grades on. Remember why you're doing OMAD in the first place, to improve your health and thus your life. So tweak away. The only official rules are the rules that work for you. And all this brings us to tip number two, time. Should you be a early OMADer? And this conversation is tricky because it requires the balance of multiple health and life factors here. And you know us, we're all about balance and lifting things, both internal and external. I'll continue. In the grand scheme of things, OMAD is just a form of TRF or time-restricted feeding. One that comes with a lot of food in a short amount of time. So let's talk a little bit about the science of early time-restricted feeding. Yes, science! ETRF has been a growing topic of interest in the fasting and circadian rhythm literature as of late. And there are some pretty good reasons behind it. The limited data on the topic suggests that ETRF improves weight loss and cardiometabolic health. Things such as insulin levels, insulin sensitivity, glucose tolerance, and blood pressure were improved in studies where participants ate earlier in the day rather than the same thing later in the day. And one of the main reasons of this is thought to be our natural sleep-wake cycles, our circadian alignment or our circadian rhythms which basically dictates our metabolism, our physiology, and our behaviors over a 24-hour period. And you thought you were in control. And what research is pointing out is a lot of plasma lipids and age-related hormones, such as cortisol, insulin, and growth hormone, vary across the 24-hour day, showing that they peak in the morning and are downregulated at night, implicating that early in the day might be the best time for food intake. Hmm. And if you want to know more here, we cover it in detail. Now, remember I said there were a fair amount of social implications here too. So let's address the 900 pound elephant. Elephants are more than 900 pound. Um, damn it. Let's, <laughs> let's address the 9,000 pound elephant in the room. And that is the typically biggest and most social meal of the day, dinner. Modern society has designated this as the primary time to connect with friends and family, drinking, eating, laughing, and singing until food coma status has been reached. And at that point, we retire to slumber. After a midnight snack, of course. This is the part where the aforementioned balance needs to be hashed out. Because remember, we know large meals at night can have negative impacts on your sleep and is less than optimal from an energy storage and distribution standpoint. But we also know that this sacred family and friends time is super important from a social and mental health standpoint. Looks like we got an old fashioned standoff. And to be honest, there is no correct answer here. You need to assess your current situation and make your OMAD timeframe decision based on your requirements. Keeping in mind the earlier in the day you finish your meals, the better off metabolically you'll probably be. And we know with OMAD, large meals, come with the territory. This is something that you should probably play around and test around with. Try a few different OMAD eating windows, see how you feel, use any fitness tech that you have, whether it be a Fitbit, an Aura Ring, Whoop, to measure some objective data so you can compare it to your subjective feels. You gotta go a little N of one here. And with that, we finally reached the end of the timing tip. So we'll move on to the um, actual nourishment. I mean, that's gotta be sorta of important, right? Food matters. All right, let me start off with a little secret for you here. You can probably squeak by improving several metabolic markers just by doing OMAD in itself, regardless of what you eat. But come on, if you're going that far and following a one meal a day lifestyle, you might as well add the healthy multiplier and eat some nutrient dense energizing, revitalizing foods. I mean, come on. As explained in this Eating for Longevity talk, good timing plus good food compound on each other. So do yourself a favor and optimize OMAD by eating plenty of real whole foods. Here's my go-to tips. First, focus on fiber, a critical nutrient that most of the Western world is totally deficient in. Why? Because fiber will fill you up allowing you to withstand 22 plus hours of potentially no nourishment. Sound familiar? It will also improve digestion, helping push foods through your digestive tract, and it will make your gut buddies 
or those few trillion microbes, the happiest people around or bugs around. They will ferment on all that furious goodness and will pay you back in metabolites that will make you smile. Like I said, I like to warm the system up first with a little fruit. Taking my break, then going to a fiber and protein pack main course, and then bringing in the closer some dark leafy green veggies. And for me personally, when doing this early er in the day feeding, my grazing window is between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Like I said, you've got this far. Might as well add food to the party. Just don't overdo it. And that brings us to our last tip. A friendly reminder that tomorrow is another day. When I first transitioned from ADF to OMAD, I found that I was eating similar sized meals to the ones that I ate when I was feeding every other day. You see how there could be a potential problem there? Well, there was. Unfortunately, overnourishment of real whole food is still overnourishment. And it wasn't until a week or two after that I made the mental adjustment and started telling myself there in fact will be a tomorrow. I didn't need to shovel food down my throat like a freshly stuffed pepper every single grazing window. In fact, I would feel better and operate better as an organism if I didn't. So give your body a little time to adjust to this new eating strategy. And keep in mind, tomorrow is another day. I mean, it's almost like a pretty obvious tip, but those are the ones that often move the needle the most. And it really helped me personally optimize my OMAD protocol. Guess what? You made it. Tips done. Hopefully I gave you something to chew on. <laughs> no, I tried. That's what I got for you today. I personally am really enjoying OMAD life and looking forward to tuning it over the next couple of months. Keep on the lookout for some more content coming out on it. Have a couple of ideas. If you have any ideas or things that you want me to cover or OMAD tips from this talk, put them in the comments below. Would love to take a look at them, learn from you, and help the broader community. And if you didn't remember, I'll remind you, right here, right now, is the perfect time to invest in you. And with that cheesy sign off, I'll show myself the door. Well, there's no door, but it's kind of a exit way. Catch you next week.